This is Staff Gymnasium, home of World Brockton Boxers, and tonight, a familiar ride with the Abington Green Wave from just across town borders. I'm Mad Dog Man Mouse, and joined alongside my broadcast partner, Miles Jackson. Miles, Brockton coming off a big win on Friday night. Yeah, um, their first home game of the season, they look awfully well-rounded, like a well-rounded well team. Um, the, the center doing a great job. Um, I can't think of her name off him, uh, Fairhurst. Done a great job at center. They got some good guards, and they got a great bench um, to complement them. And they've got six seniors that really did everything they could. A complete game played by all the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, it was a complete game by everybody. The sophomores, the juniors, the, the, the um, seniors. It was just a great game for um, Brockton High. Getting ready for tip-off here at Staff Gymnasium. Tony Ferris in to take the tip. She wins it back to Giannisha Silva more for Brockton. Catherine Lewis over to Jelani Jackson, over to Silva Moore. Over back to Lewis. Moore gets fouled by one of the Green Waves, so Brockton will have an inbounding foul. Lewis over to Jelani Jackson, who had four three points. Yeah, it was a nice transition by um, the Green Wave, getting the re um, defensive rebound and coming down quickly, getting an easy two. Catherine Lewis pass for Silver Moore goes out of bounds off of Abington. Inbounds it to Jelani Jackson. Jackson back to Moore. Lewis, Lewis down low to Aliyah Brito. Tries to throw it out to Jelani Jackson. No connection is found. So green wave ball. Yeah, when Aliyah gets it in that close in the red paint, she just should just try and put it right up. Maybe get the foul. Found by Giannisha Silva Moore, who takes it back the other way for Brockton. All the way, lays it up, no good, but she is foul. Yeah, Silva Moore, she's very aggressive. One of the more aggressive starters on this um, Lady Boxers team. I like her play. And of course, she drove so hard to the net a couple of times last game that she actually injured her left ankle, but came back, put the boxers on her back, and carried them to the promised landmines. Yeah, she's a tough Lady Boxer. As you said, came back in after that injury and con continued on to the end of the game. Moore goes one of two from the line, two to one the score, Abington on top of Brockton. Jenny Worden driving to the net gets fouled on the way, so she will shoot two from the line. Yeah, the green wave looked pretty um, comfortable there. Passing the basketball, working it to the open guy. No good on the first attempt for the junior, no, the sophomore guard rather, Jenny Wording. Rebounded by Fairhurst, who gets it over to Catherine Lewis. Lewis to Moore. Moore back to Jackson. Jackson trying to set something up. Abington takes it off the other way. This is Ward. Tops the free throw line. Up and good. Four to one lead for the Green Wave. Yeah, that was nice defense by Jenny Wharton. Made the steal and made the, um, the little jump shot. Brockton taking a little while to warm up here, Matt. As they did Friday night, Miles, that might be the, the key to the Brockton boxes this season. Last game against Connecticut, they really played a close game in the entire first half, and yeah. then they really turned it on in the second half. Yeah, well, right now they got their hands full again. 
Jenny Warden gets the offensive rebound and puts it right back up and gets fouled. And it was on Fairhurst, so that's her first. Warden once again misses both free throws. Lewis takes a long three, no good, but follows her own rebound, and it is out of bounds off of Abington. A tremendous solo effort by Catherine Lewis. Yeah, that was good hustle by the Lady Boxers. All the way back to Gionacia Silva Moore. Lewis looking inside to Fairhurst who can't control the pass and it's out of bounds off of Brockton. Yeah, early on Fairhurst hasn't had a lot of touches on offense. I think they need to get the ball to her a little bit more when they come down with it on offense. Jimmy Worden over to number five for the Green Wave who shoots a three no good. That was Maura Hurley. Lewis comes away with it for Brockton. Over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson out to Moore. Moore trying to drive inside, lays it up, no good. Fairhurst with the rebound. Her attempt is no good, it's brought down by Jenny Word. Gordon is followed by Katherine Lewis, so she will be at the line for her fifth and sixth free throw attempt of the night, Miles, yeah. gone 0 for 4. Yeah, she's um, really hustling out there, getting the defensive rebound and bringing it all, all the way down by herself a number of times, and either has made, has made the basket or got fouled. So she's drawing a lot of fouls early on in this first quarter. Gordon now one for six at the free throw line. Yeah. She's got to take advantage when she's on the free throw line, especially as much as she's on the free throw line. One for a long two for Brock and good. That is Nadia Montero. Yeah, nice shot by Nadia. She got herself set and hit the big three. Or two, excuse me. Five to three, the score is Giannisha Silvermore gets tripped up going the other way. She took quite a fall there. She's a little bit slow to get up, but she looks to be fine. Yeah, it almost looked like she fell on her head. Like the right or left side of her face. But it looked, like you said, it looked like she's okay. She's shaking it off. And she has it now. More for three, no good. Rebounded by Aliyah Brito down low, lays it up, no good, and it is stuck next to the shot clock. And that's what Brito has to do. She has to put it right back up, hopefully get it in, if not, uh, the foul. Nice job by uh, Brito. Miles, they're throwing the backup ball up to the top of the backboard to try to get this the starting ball down. There it is. Now does it count because it went through the hoop? Right. Referee was getting a little embarrassed. That was about his third or fourth try before he finally got it down. Brito at the line for two shots. goes 0 for 2 at the line, both a little bit short. Abington the other way. Warden blocked down low by Brito. Eventually is fouled by Tony Fairhurst. Uh, they're going to rule a foul against Aliyah Brito. Yeah, good defense. It's just um, Aliyah must have caught her, um, caught her a little bit of her arm. Misses her seventh attempt from the free throw line. 
Jesus. He's not really looking to be one of the best free throw shooters for Abigail. She hits her second attempt, 6-3 to three the score, with just under four minutes remaining. Jesus Nation Silvermore long for Natasha Elias for three. Bounces off the rim twice, no good. Rebounded by Brito, no good. Gordon comes away with it for the green wave. Gordon down low. Up and in by number 24, Hannah Rogers, and we're gonna have a timeout called by April Dingwell, the head coach of the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, Kennerita Lewis moving the moving without the ball well, was set up right there underneath the basket. Good pass by um, the Lady Green Wave and uh, an easy two. And they've got a five point lead early on in this first quarter. Miles, both teams have four fouls against them. So foul trouble might turn into a big, big part of this game. It definitely could play a big part in this game. But right now, what um, Lady Boxers have to do, they have to hustle a little bit more on the rebounding. They get the, they're not getting the rebounds like they should on the defensive end or the offensive end. And they have to try a little harder there because these are. Uh, these Abington um, Lady Green Wave, they're really hustling on both ends of the court. Their transition game is doing very well, getting the ball down very quickly, looking for the quick shot. They're not doing a lot of passing around. Um, they're going right to the basket. Miles, Jenny Warden, number 15, the sophomore guard for Abington, has been doing it all thus far except making her eight free throws. Yeah. She's gone two for eight at the line. Yeah, and, 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 and that might come back to haunt the Green Wave. If this game stays close, she ha if she gets to the free throw line, she has to make some free throws. Especially if you know how to get to the free throw line. Brockton ball, three and a half to go, eight to three the score. So many more inbounds for Jelani Jackson. Jackson up for Montero over to Brito. Long for Natasha Elias. Now Silvermore driving in. Up, no good. Brought down by Worden, but it's out of bounds. Yeah, nice hustle by Brito. Going for that rebound. Jelani Jackson now. Jackson is fouled on her way in. Jackson moving, moving to the basket without the ball. Cutting right through the middle, got the pass. Jenny Worden coming out of the game for the Green Wave. Yeah, Green Wave doing a lot of substitution. Substituting early on in this first quarter. Lies for Jackson, Jackson for Brito, back to Jackson for three. No good. Off of Elias' face and out, so it'll be Abington Ball. It looks like the uh, Lady Boxes have picked up the hustle on the boards a little bit more since that last time out. And the 12 lost the ball, that was Aaron Foley. Elias brings it the other way, now Jelani Jackson. Jackson for Brito, Brito hands it to Moore. Moore stops, pops, up, no good. Taken down by Anna Rogers. That was a call of one of the uh, Abington Lady Green Wave players. I believe that was called on Brianna Donovan, number 25, who is being substituted out for Maura Hurley. Or for Elias. Back to Moore. Up to Jelani Jackson. I thought that was going to hit me in the head. Down to Catherine Lewis. Brito for a long two. Good. Nice job by Brito, setting up nicely, hitting that shot. That's a good shot for her being being a forward. We have a timeout called by the head coach of the Green Wave, Stephen Moore. Brockton 
turning on the pressure as of late, but still down eight to five. Yeah, exactly. They have turned on the pressure a little bit, a little bit more hustle since the timeout before this one. They came out a little bit more fire underneath their sneakers, and um, they've been hustling a little bit better. They're only down by three now. Miles, uh, a little bit of a roster shakeup. Tony Fairhurst is now on the bench for Brockton. She really was probably the most complete player in the last game against the Ponikin. Yeah, I, I think the coach just wanted to sit her down for a little bit, talk to her maybe on the, over there, and I'm sure the next time she gets back in there, she'll be a little bit more of a force. So Brockton trying to turn up the defensive pressure against Abington while not trying to foul too much. Brockton has four team fouls, but Abington has six, so Abington might be getting into a little bit of foul trouble with two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Thing about the boxes, they the lady boxes, you don't want to get this team from Abington a little bit too confident. You really want to try it now. Turn the Jets on and um, really start to play some basketball and try to get a take the lead and get something going here. Number 12 lays it up, no good. Gets her own rebound, tries to throw it out of bounds off of Silver Moore. No good. Fairhurst now making her way back into the game, replacing Aliyah Brito. Ten down low. Ruled a jump ball, a good call by the officials as Fairhurst had both of her hands on the ball. Yeah, take a nice hustle by. Catherine Lewis for the, um, Abington. Getting her own rebound and trying to put it back up again. But good defense by the Lady Boxes. Tasha Elias over two more. More cross court for Elias. Elias to the middle for Jelani Jackson. Jackson inside to Montero, back out to Moore. Moore driving into the paint. Up, no good. Rebounded by Nadia Montero out to Jackson. Jackson now with the short two up and good. Yeah, nice drive by Jackson. I'm still looking for um, Lady Boxes to get it into the big guy. Uh, Fairhurst. That whole time down on that last offensive possession, Fairhurst did not even touch the basketball. But Miles, that was really great ball movement by the Boxes. It, it was good ball, ball movement. I have to give him a check mark there. Foley trying to work a give and go is fouled on the way to the basket. And that is Another foul on Fairhurst. She's gonna have to come out. Aaron Foley at the line. I'm sure Leah Brito appreciated the short rest she got, but finds herself back in the game replacing Tony Fairhurst. Brought down by Silver Moore. 9 to 7, the score brought him down by 2. Elias takes a 3. Good, and the foul. Nice play by Natasha. She had hands in her face. She still made the shot, got fouled. Now she has a chance to make a three-point play here. Natasha, she's one of the better ball handlers on the team. You can tell she's very sound when she has the basketball. Elias misses the four-point attempt, but Brockton comes down with the rebound. Jackson driving into the paint. No good, it's kicked out to Brito. Over to Moore, good save by Brito. 17 on the shot clock, Elias for three, good! Brockton turning it on. Oh, nice, nice job by Elias. 13 to nine, the score with 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Aaron Foley holding for last shot, three seconds left, Abington's gonna get a shot off. Foley up is foul. Wow, that was close, but there was contact. But it looked like the um, the ball carrier initiated the contact. It was a close call. The 
I believe Nadia Montero being called for the block. Foley at the line for two shots with 1.1 second remaining. Actually, I, I think they called the I want to say they called the foul on Brito because the contact was made there when she came up with the pick. Oh, came up with the try to block, block her from her uh, movement. Two for two, a long full court attempt by G Nation Silvermore, no good. So the score at the end of the first quarter, 13 to 11, Brockton finding themselves on top after a couple of quick three-pointers. Yeah, a uh, couple of quick three-pointers, some good defense, good ball movement by Brockton's offense, moving the ball around. And they made some big outside shots there to take a two-point lead early on here in this uh, first half. Miles, Tony Fairhurst, who did so much against the Ponikit last Friday night, really being held quietly, and Abington is exploiting her and drawing fouls against her, so she's spent most of the first quarter on the bench. Yeah, and that, that's because Abington's done a good job, like you said, exploiting her. She's made some fouls. She's in a little bit of foul trouble um, early on, but um, she still needs the ball on offense. Um, her teammates need to get her, when she's in there, they need to get her the ball a little bit more. And uh, again, they cannot let Abington kind of hang around because Abington's a bigger team than the first team that they played the other night. Abington has some girls on there that can think, go up with the big girls that Brockton has. So Brockton has to be careful and they really need to try to get some type of cushion, cushiony type lead in this ball game. Miles, the outside shooting of the Brockton boxes has been on point really in the last two minutes of the first quarter. It was such a big part of their opening night win here at Staff Gymnasium. Yeah, you can, you can, one thing that um, the Lady Box can do, they can shoot the basketball. Mostly all of them can shoot from the outside and, and, and that really is a, um, a plus for the, and makes it easier for this um, Brock and High coach to um, coach this team because um, they can score points, especially if, it, if um, two or three of them get hot. Jenny Warden back in the game for the Green Wave. Catherine Lewis to inbound to Jelani Jackson. Back to Lewis. Lewis for Brito out of bounds off of Warden. Jackson to Moore, Moore to Fairhurst, back out to Moore. Moore for three, no good. Rebounded by Warden for the Green Wave. And a double dribble yeah, double call. Dribble. Good call by the ref. back to Jelani Jackson. Jackson for Catherine Lewis. Fakes the shot, gets it over back to Jackson, gets it to Silva Moore. Jackson back out to Moore. Moore all the way across the court. Catherine Lewis can't catch up with it. Yeah, a little miscommunication there. Silva Moore thought that uh, her teammate was going to zig when she zagged. Warden for the long three, no good. Rebounded by Fairhurst. Jackson Moore. Good save by big game Miles Jackson. That was a big game catch, wasn't it? You got some nice hands over there, Miles. <laughs> Brockton ball to be inbounded by Genius and Silver Moore. And we have a whistle. The Abington head coach, Stephen Moore, is irate at the officials ruling that ball out of bounds off of the green wave. Yeah, I thought that, that was a break there for the boxes. I thought it was off the boxes. Ward to Jackson. Jackson back to Moore, inbound. In for Leah Brito, who can't control it. 
five all the way up and in and the foul. A great play by Brianna Donovan. There was very little body contact, just enough for the ref to call the foul. I thought it could have went either way, a little ticky tack, but I tell you what, Green Wave, a, a good hustle on their part. Again, their transition game, transition game is excellent this evening up against these lady boxes. They're not wasting any time getting that ball down the court. Nadia Montero replaces Catherine Lewis. Hey, hey, come back, John. Hello, hello. Brito to Moore. Ball pressure. Back to Let's Brito ball pressure. for Jordan Jackson. And straight out of bounds, giving everyone at the scorer's table a little bit of a hello. Yeah, this might be a, a, a good time to call a timeout. The Lady Boxers kind of get their heads back into this ball game. Brockton's passing has been a little bit off tonight as well, Miles. Yes, it has. Another errant pass directed to Fairhurst. Miles, big game. Miles, you're doing it all tonight. Doing it all, bro. Second block credited to big game Miles Jackson. <laughs> Gotta be ready. Gotta be ready. Silver Moore over to Jackson, back to Moore. Moore into Fairhurst. Fairhurst being held up. Abington with tremendous defensive pressure comes away with the ball. Brianna Donovan off of Fairhurst, but back off of Donovan out of bounds. Yeah, I'm surprised the ref didn't call a foul. There, there was some body contact, but I, th I believe they didn't call a foul because she lost the basketball. Fairhurst, from her body language, just for some reason, it doesn't seem like she's really into it right at the moment. Abington with another steal, number 12 going the other way. And she's called for a travel. Aaron Foley. Fairhurst to Jelani Jackson. Jackson back to Montero. Montero called for the travel. Yeah, she took a step before she uh, put the ball on the court. Foley getting a quick breather on the bench for Abington. And I see they brought back in Natasha Ellis. No good. Janisha Silver Moore looking for some transition. Lays it up. No good. Rebounded by Worden. Nice job by the Green Way. Getting back up top. Characters go to Moore with 450 remaining. Moore fakes the shot, gets it over to Nadia Montero, back to Moore. Moore now shoots the three, no good. Rebounded by Abington. Oh, tough break there for the Green Wave. That was a nice pass. They just couldn't finish it. There's a Brockton player writhing on the floor. Yeah, that looks like Silva Moore. come out of the game sure momentarily holding her face Matt I believe Natasha pronounces her name Elias yes Last name, Elias? Yes. Okay. Aliyah Brito off the bench replacing Silvermore will take Moore's free throw attempts. Up and good. On our first attempt in the one and one situation, both teams now in the bonus. 16 to 14, Abington on top of Brockton. 
Leah Brito at the line. Around the rim, no good. Three green wave, fight for it. And that was good defense by Brito. She had her arms up and everything. It just made the, the um, Lady Green Wave uh, play a hot, made it harder for her to pass that ball. She lost it off her fingertip because of uh, Brito's tough defense. With those big long arms, she stuck them up there. Good job. Montero inbounding for Elias back to Montero. Up for Fairhurst, doesn't connect it, not a bounce. Another errant pass by the Brockton Boxers Miles. Yeah, they, they really can't afford a lot of turnovers when you're behind. Wharton with the long three, no good. Out of bounds off of Brockton. Silvermore makes her way into the game. She will replace Tony Fairhurst. Warden all the way into the paint, lays it up, no good. Gets the rebound, lays it up and in. And the foul. Again, nice job by Warden. Going to the basket strong, getting her own rebound after the miss, and putting it back up and getting fouled. Brockton comes away with the rebound. Brockton now down by four, 18 to 14. Jelani Jackson has it for Brockton over to Silvermore. More back to Jackson. Abington playing a very stringent zone defense. Deflected off more, straight to Brito. Brito tries to go cross court to Natasha Elias. Unsuccessful, but Adamson knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, Brockton caught a break right there. And um, where the ball went off the face of one of the lady uh, Abington players. Elias for Jackson. Jackson over to Moore. Moore holding back to Jackson. 15 on the shot clock. Jackson out to Elias, who's got some room. Shoots the three, no good. Rebounded by number 12, who is it up and in, Aaron Foley. Yeah, that's their strength, this transition game. Abington screaming for a backcourt violation. It was very close. Very close. Jackson walks into the paint, off the board, no good. Rito with the rebound, and it's going to be against. Yeah, they're going to call Martin. number 21. Both teams going, entering the bonus, so the foul will result in a one and one situation. Yeah, that was on Nadia Montero. Good hustle on the boxes, Pop, but right now the Green Wave is out hustling the boxes on the boards. Hannah Rogers at the line makes her first. She will get a second. Abington now leading by seven, 21 14. First two for two, up by eight now. The green wave over the Broxers. I got some hands too, Miles. Yes, you do, Mad Dog. He was ready. up by eight. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the second quarter. That'll be a backcourt violation. Good defense there by uh, Silva Moore. She inbounds it to Jelani Jackson. Jackson back to Moore. Moore not getting much help. 
Goes cross court to Elias, Elias back to Moore. In for Aliyah Brito, who's triple teamed by the Green Wave. Montero kicks it out to Jackson. Elias now with a very high rainbow shot. Three, no good. Rebounded by Moore. Takes a couple of bounces off the rim, no good. Elias with the rebound, gets it out to Jackson. Yeah, nice hustle by the boxes. Right now, nothing's falling. At least they hustled for that rebound, got it back again. 18 on the shot clock. Silver Moore for three. Good. Oh, that's, that's a big shot. They needed that. Lady Boxers needed that shot. 22 to 17. Brockton now down by five. Sydney Hamilton and Jenny Warden getting ready to come back into the game for the Abington Green Wave. Yeah, Brockton putting on a full court press. <laughs> Warden stopped that ball as she was getting ready to come into the game, Miles, but I was ready. You was ready. I knew you were ready. Man. I was born ready. Aaron Foley at the line for two shots. second attempt to put the Green Wave back up by six. Montero to Elias, back to Montero, over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson up for Brito, back to Jackson. Jackson walks into the paint, lays it up and in. Yeah, nice little floater, went right in the paint. Wasted no time getting it up and getting the two. Boxes need to hold here. Rebounded by Brito, gets it up to Nadia Montero, two on one. Nadia Montero up and in. Nice job by Montero, nice job by Brito, getting a defensive rebound and quickly getting it out up top. 23-21, Abington still on top of Brockton. Maggie Colley has it, gets it back to Warden, who's looking to take a long three. Watch into the paint, throws it up, no good. Gets her own rebound there. It's taken right out of her hands by Leah Brito. Elias to Jackson. Jackson for three. Good! Big shot right there by Jackson. Big time clutch shot. Brockton's got the lead 24 to 23 with 17.6 seconds. And Brito gets fouled. And I tell you, Brito has done an excellent job these last few minutes getting rebounds, hustling, starting the fast break. She's really doing a yeoman job, um, taking up the slack for Fairhurst. Colley called for the push against Brito. And Brito will have two shots. Jenny Worden has a cut on her left index finger. She's being attended to by head trainer Jerry Connors. Those first shot, good. Burrito doing, by two. Burrito doing a good job on the foul line for this game. She hasn't missed too many shots. She really takes her time up there, studies, and then uh, takes the shot. Short on her second, but Abington knocks it out of bounds. It'll be a Brockton ball. Yeah, good call by the referee. Clearly, it was off uh, Abington's uh, ball player. Brockton going to hold for last shot here with 16.5 remaining. More for three, no good. So much for the holding for the last shot, huh? <laughs> they should have. Yeah, I, I was expecting them to hold, hold for the last shot. Obviously the Lady Boxers had different ideas. Now they have to hold here defense, they have to play good defense. All the way down the court for number five who is unable to get a shot off, no foul called. And, and because she didn't have control of that basketball, but that was not good defense by the Lady Boxers. You've got to, if the man goes towards the basket, you've got to follow him. 
Jackson for Montero for Brito. Brito walks into the paint, lays it up, no good. Kicks it out to Dionysius Silvermore. His time expires, unable to get the shot off. So the time runs out on the first half. And Miles, 25-23 for the boxes, but you gotta be shocked that they have the lead at this point. Yeah, I'm a little bit, but I think the reason they have the lead is because of their hustle, but also because that last three minutes or so, the Green Wave, the Lady um, Abington Green Wave team, they went on a little cold spell. And I think it was because of Brockton's aggressive defense, aggressive rebounding, especially by Brito, they got him back in this ball game. Miles, both teams in foul trouble early. Brockton had 10 against them, Abington had nine. Both entering the bonus, but free throws really playing a factor in this. Abington has not shot well from the charity strike. No, they haven't, and it's hurt them big time. I mean, just that one uh, Green Wave ball player, she missed about seven or eight free throw attempts, and she's the main one going to the free throw line. So. Green Wave is going to have to um, intensify their free throw and make more free throws in that second half because they're getting to the free throw line. Miles Abington doing a good job of shutting down Tony Fairhurst. Yeah, they have totally shut her down. She's not, you can tell her by her body language, she, for some reason she's just not into it. Hopefully um, a little pep talk in the halftime locker room will get her back out here because they really need her to, to step up um, this, um, this basketball game. So the, the halftime score, rather, 25-23, the Brockton Boxers on top of the Abington Green Wave. We'll take a short break, break and be back for second half action. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to second half action between the Abington Green Wave and your Brockton Boxers. Brockton up 25 23 coming into the second half. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Miles Jackson. Miles, not the prettiest of all first halves we've seen. No, it was a little ugly on both sides, um, but I tell you what, the Lady Boxers have to really come out in this second second half and really have to hustle and control those boards. And, um, and number 11, Fairhurst is going to have to get in the ball game. Miles, the three-point shooting of the Brockton Boxers has been decent as of late. Janisha Silvermore driving in, lays it up, and in 27-23, Brockton strikes first here in the second half. And that's what they have to do. Out of bounds off of Brockton. Boxers really need to catch the green wave off guard here. Start the second, second half off with a... Warden um, for three. No good. Jackson to Catherine Lewis to Ferrist. Ferris can't control the pass. Able to keep it in bounds, but eventually throws it out of bounds. Yeah, tough, tough, tough pass. That wasn't a good pass to Fairhurst. And all she could do is try and do the best she can and um, try to save it. Jenny Worden, who injured her left hand in the second quarter, gets it to number 14, Sydney Hamilton, who shoots along too. Janisha Silva Moore over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson back to Moore. Moore to Jackson. Jackson for three. No good. Rebounded by Worden. I didn't particularly like that shot that um, Jackson took. I still think they need to work it inside to uh, Fairhurst or um, Brito. Fairhurst just coming out. She's replaced by Nadia Montero. Jackson with a good crossover, gets it over to Silva Moore. Moore stops, pops, no good. Rebounded by Montero, who loses her headband. Kicks it out to Catherine Lewis for a three, good. Yeah, big shot by uh, Lewis. Fox has needed that. Now they need to get energized and play some defense. 
Nadia Montero's Sands headband playing man defense against number 25, Brianna Donovan. Aaron Foley kicks it out to Maura Hurley. Hurley inside for Warden, taken by Giannisha Silvermore, stolen by Warden, who throws it behind the backboard, not a bounce. And th that was a good defensive stance by the Lady Boxers right there. That's what they need to do, play some real tough defense. Yeah, Abington working the full court press. Lewis for three, no good, rebounded by Brito, lays it up and in. Yeah, I like, I like how Brito boxed out, got the rebound, put it right off the glass sweetly and in. Abington calls a timeout with five minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Brockton now up 32 to 25. And Miles, Brockton really taking your words to heart and starting to get some of the rebounds. Yes, I'm very strong on the board, but that was a good timeout by the Lady uh, Green Wave Abington girls because um, they don't want to get too much farther behind. So whatever the coach has to say to them, he's saying it to them now to try to keep them close with these later boxes and, and they're starting to warm up a little bit. They're being really aggressive on the boards. They're protecting the basketball when they come down and, and it's resulting in a little run here by the Lady Boxers, like you said, with a seven point lead. 32 to 25, Brockton taking uh, advantage of this timeout as well. Trying to get some energy into to Tony Fairhurst who doesn't look like she's playing 100% tonight, Miles. Yeah, she still seems like she's in a cloud a little bit. Um, she was taken out there. She started the second half, but um, she didn't last too long. And um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but the rest of them are picking up the slack for Fairhurst. And especially Brito. We're going to bring it up for the Green Wave. She lays it up, no good. Gets her own rebound and is fouled. Oh, that one's on Brito. She's called for a push. Jenny Warden at the line. She's gone two of eight thus far. Makes her first. Fairhurst going in to replace Aliyah Brito. Now this is a big test for Fairhurst. She's, co she's coming in for Brito and she needs to pick up the slack like uh, Brito has. Nadia Montero comes down with the rebound. Kicks it out to Giannisha Silvermore. Walks in, lays it up. No good, takes a weird bounce off the rim and winds up in the hands of Jenny Warden. Yeah, that was a nice drive. Unfortunately, it just didn't fall for uh, Silvermore. Aaron Foley now, senior captain. Held up ball for an awful long time without being called for a travel. And a jump ball called, a good job of forcing the jump by Catherine Lewis, but it is a green wave basketball. But I tell you, that was excellent hustle by Aaron Foley for the green wave. I mean, she went in there, took the shot, and got the rebound a couple times, still tried to put it up. Excellent uh, effort. Word and long for Maggie Colley. Colley with the kind of a floater shot, no good, gets her own rebound. Jelani Jackson getting it to Nadia Montero. Very athletic play by Jackson. Montero stops and pops for three. Good off the backboard. A very long two. That was a big shot by uh, Nadia Montero. Big shot. Well, I don't know. It, that looked like she just lost control. I mean, there were some hands in there, but I didn't see a lot of touching. I think the Green Wave caught a break on that one. Janisha Silvermore being called for the foul. Sydney <laughs> Hamilton and Hannah Rogers coming out of the game for the Green Wave. Three of 12 now at the line is Jenny Warden. More for three. No good. 
Rebounded by Catherine Lewis. Lewis back to Jelani Jackson. A Warden playing some tough defense for the Green Wave. Jackson over to Moore. Moore back to Jackson. Montero had the ball smacked out of her hands but gets the weird bounce. And a penalty called against Maggie Cauley. Committed against Nadia Montero. Brockton will have an inbounding. First foul of the half for the green wave. Yeah, Brockton's got a fresh 30 on the clock. They were down to four seconds before that foul was called. Moore driving, gets it down to Fairhurst, lays it up, no good. Rebounded by Worden. And Fairhurst, that was an easy two that she missed. She should have just put it right off the glass. Instead, she tried but to um, still throw it right in. Janish still more now. Jelani Jackson lays it up. Smacked from behind by Jenny Worden. Wow, that was a great defensive play by the um, Abington girls. That was number 15. Like you said, Warden. She comes out for a well-deserved breather. Wow. And Miles, this another packed house here at Staff Gymnasium. Abington is not too far away, only about 15 minutes here away from the campus of Brockton High School. This crowd erupted when Warden made that block. Good two put up by Colleen Kearns. Big shot by Kearns. Oh, oh Miles, you're outdoing me tonight. Hey, it's coming to me all tonight, huh? Wow. Did you stick a magnet in the ball or something, Miles? Colleen's got 21. Lewis inbounds to Jackson. Jackson, good crossover. Kicks it out to Lewis, Lewis for three, no good. Rebounded by Silvermore, lays it up, no good. Out of bounds off of Tony Fairhurst. And head coach April Dingwell is irate at the rebounding effort shown by the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, they're, they're missing Brito in there, in the paint. Now Fairhurst comes away with it. Looked like she was struggling for possession. Moore for three. Good. Big shot by Silva Moore. That was a big one. Excellent awareness by Fairhurst to find the wide open Giannisha Silva Moore. 37 to 29 the score. Brockton on top. And a travel committed by Aaron Foley. Boxes need to come down and and, and get a shot and get a basket here. Match up, match up, match up. Right now they're up by uh, eight. Natasha Elias to inbound to Jackson. Elias fresh into the game replacing Nadia Montero. Jelani Jackson over to Catherine Lewis. Lewis fouled on her way to the basket, will shoot two and she's holding her ankle. Yeah, nice job by Montero. Going to the basket strong. Trying to initiate some contact, and she did. Catherine Lewis, a senior, having a steady game this evening. Lewis goes one of two from the charity stripe, 38-29. Now number 20, Colleen Kearns lays it up and in. Silver Moore the other way. Over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson walks in, no good. Swaps the ball over to Catherine Lewis, who gets it to Silver Moore. Moore over to Elias. That was a nice hustle by Jackson. Moore wide open, a long three, no good. Rebounded by Fairhurst, lays it up, but it's fouled. And it looks like Fairhurst woke up right there, went in strong to get that offensive rebound, put it right back up like she should have. She's in the paint and got fouled. 
when you're in the paint, if you get that rebound and you're in the offense, you get that rebound in the paint, you should put it right back up, especially if you're a big guy. Fairhurst misses her first attempt. Makes the second, rocking up by eight. 39-31. Wording up to Donovan. Donovan is fouled by Fairhurst. And that really wasn't a good foul. Montero back in for Catherine Lewis. That's a big miss for the Green Wave. They really can't afford to, from here on in, they really can't afford to miss many free throw attempts. They've already missed a ton of them in that first half. Donovan goes 0 for 2. Rebounded by Worden, lays it up, no good. Fairhurst fighting for the rebounds, not getting them. Finally brought down by Nadia Montero, gets it over to Jelani Jackson. Yeah, nice defense by Fairhurst. Making the shot a lot tougher. Jackson loses it, but it goes to Fairhurst who lays it up and in. And that's what she has to do. Put it right off the, um, the backboard. There's a square painted up there in the, on the glass. Easy shot. Natasha Elias comes down with the steal. Gets it to Jelani Jackson. Jackson holding gets it back to Elias. Elias to Silva Moore. Moore with a crazy shot and one! Strong move to the basket by Silva Moore. Excellent balance. She was fouled and still got the basket. Silva Moore makes it a three point play. 43, uh, 44 rather to 31 the score. Brockton on top of Abington. That was a big three point play right there by Silva Moore to increase this box of lead. Jelani Jackson called with a push. Jenny Worden with the ball for the green wave. 10 seconds, Abigail holding for a last shot. Worden for three. No good. Montero comes down with the rebound. Silva Moore's got three seconds. She's fouled right before time expires. She. That was not a smart foul by um, number 15 for the Green Wave. That was Warden, and I'm surprised. I don't think she realized how much time was left. I mean, she had no shot, and uh, she made a. Uh, that was a dumb foul right there. going to be an inbounding foul with 1.2 seconds left. Confusion on both sides. Little officiating discussion right in front of us. 0.3 seconds left on the clock, Miles. You almost wonder why even bother. Jackson up for Montero as time expires, 44-31. The score at the end of the third quarter, Miles Brockton turning it on defensively and doing a very good job of getting rebounds in the third quarter. Well, that, that's the key right there in the third quarter is rebounding. Brockton controlled the boards in that third quarter for the first time the whole game. And because they controlled the boards, now they have a 13-point lead. But what they must do in the fourth quarter is keep that intensity up, play the boards real hard because this Abington team is not going down easy without a fight. Miles, Tony Fairhurst has started to come alive in the third quarter right under the basket. And that's like a breath of fresh air, Matt, to see her starting to come alive, get involved in the offense as well as the defense on the boards, getting some rebounds. She got a few assists. 
she looks like she's starting to get back into the game, and that's what they're going to need in the fourth quarter. They're going to need Fairhurst to contribute in that fourth quarter. 44 to 31 the score. Brockton on top of Abington. The cross-border rivals to the east side of Brockton, fresh off of a Super Bowl win, is the Abington Green Wave. Not Natasha Elias inbounds to Jelani Jackson. Jackson for Elias. Energy! Energy! Elias out back to Jackson. Jackson to Silvermore. Elias loses it off of head coach April Dingwell. And you don't see that too often from number 10. Um, Natasha losing the basketball. She's pretty good in taking care of the basketball. Three attempt, no good. Wharton walks around Fairhurst, lays it up and in. Yeah, that was good patience by um, Abington. Jackson up for Elias. Elias for two, no good. Out of bounds off of Bro uh, Abington, rather. Yeah, Abington really hustling hard. Abington comes away with the steal. Maura Hurley up for number 25 who lays it up and in. Brianna Donovan. Green Wave trying to make a run. Brockton's got to be careful and take care of that basketball. Silver Moore out to Elias. Doesn't connect. Wharton the other way. And alone lays it up and in. Timeout called by Brockton. Yeah, that's a, that's a good timeout by um, Coach Dingwell. Abington just played some great defense, great transition game. They've cut this lead down to seven. Brockton has to take care of the basketball. They cannot ill afford to um, throw the ball away because Abington's taking care of business. Both turnovers, they've had two straight turnovers, and, and um, Abington has turned them into four points. 44 to 37 now the score. Abington turning it on. Brockton, like you said, Miles, has really had some errant passes in the early in the fourth quarter. Yes, yeah, it's really strange how they just all of a sudden lost focus on protecting that basketball when they're on offense. And um, the Green Wave, again, has just taken advantage of those turnovers. Abington has <laughs> three timeouts left. The head coach, Stephen Moore, astounded that Brockton has the technology to tell him how many timeouts he has left. Jelani Jackson up to Fairhurst. Fairhurst pressured by Aaron Foley in a backcourt violation. Yeah, Fairhurst was, she was over the, over the backcourt. And... Um, didn't realize that who she's passing to was on the other side. You can't do that. Warden for three. No good. Rebounded by Hamilton. Now Aaron Foley around the other side. Lays it up. No good. Abington with another board. Collie for three. A long two, rather, and that one is good. Catherine Lewis up to Fairhurst. Fairhurst to Silva Moore. Moore walks in, has the ball stolen by number 25, Brianna Donovan. Foley the other way, taken away by Jelani Jackson. Up and down the court they go here at Staff Gymnasium. Jackson walks in off the backboard, no good. Rebounded by Fairhurst, who has the ball stolen. Now Silva Moore on the floor. A lot of hustle out there, uh, Matt. A lot of great hustle on both sides. A lot of dust picked up off the floor with all the bodies rolling all over the place right there, Miles. Nadia Montero returns to the game. 
in favor of Tony Fairhurst. Yeah, I see Brito's back in the game. A little bit more rebounding strength. Smacked by Catherine Lewis, gets the ball to Giannisha Silvermore. More up to Brito. Nice defense by the Lady Boxes. Lewis gets it to Jelani Jackson, back over to Moore. Moore looking to shoot with 18 on the shot clock. Over to Jelani Jackson, Jackson for three. No uh, good. Rebounded by Brito, who puts up the layup, no good. Jenny Wooden comes away with it. And a very smart timeout taken by the Abington Green Wave as Brockton was pressuring. Five minutes, nine seconds, this game is heating up and it is heating up fast, Miles. Big time, it's really heating up. As you said, both teams are really helped the scouts a little bit on defense as well as offense. Brockton just has to clamp down a little bit more, a little bit more um, concentration on taking care of passing that basketball. They can ill afford to uh, throw the ball away. Miles, a lot of weird bounces, we'll call them, in the last 45 seconds here in the fourth quarter. Balls, uh, Ball's going off of people's legs, off of people's arms, really everything, and players doing everything to try to get the basketball. Yeah, a lot of bodies are flying on the floor, as you saw, and um, just a lot of hustle. Neither one of these teams wants to leave out of here defeated, and especially the boxers where it's on their home turf. Especially to a cross-border rival like Abington, Miles just across the border on the east side. Brockton looking to start off the season with, with two wins. Yeah, and, and it's possible as long as they focus, get those rebounds. Again, um, the Green Wave starting to get those rebounds, second sh second shots on the offense. Brockton's getting one shot on, defense, on, uh, on offense. They need to clamp down on the rebounding. Jenny Worden for three, no good. Rebounded by Giannisha Silvermore. It takes a bounce off of Aaron Foley's foot. Silvermore tripped up and Foley comes away with it. Another weird bounce. Foley holding. Gets over to Jenny Worden. Worden over to Collie. Collie for three. Good. Wow, big shot right there. Right off sweet off the glass. Having to now down by two. Catherine Lewis over to Brito. Brito up and in. Nice movement by Brito without the basketball. Just went straight to the basket, got the feed, and went right up with it. Still a tight score. Wow. 46 42, Brockton up by four. Aaron Foley down low for Donovan. Back out to Cauley for a long two, no good. Rebounded by Jenny Worden. Now Carly lays it up, no good. Brito out to Silvermore. Moore driving is called for the charge. Yeah, Silvermore tried to do a little bit too much. She, she should have held it back up because there were three, three Abington on ball players right there in front and she tried to press the issue and force her way in there and got called for the charge. Fairhurst coming in for Brito. 3.48 remaining, 46. To 41. The score Brockton up by five. They just adjusted it, Miles. The scoreboard that is, as Wharton walks in, puts up a layup, no good. Jelani Jackson the other way gets it to Moore. Moore loses the ball, goes to Aaron Foley, who steps out of bounds. Brockton ball. I tell you, that was a big break for Brock Brockton. Again, Silvermore, she, when she got it, she should have um, slowed it down. Instead, she tried to make something happen, and luckily for uh, the boxes, they got the ball back. Jelani Jackson. One-handed pass, pass to Catherine Lewis. Goes to Tony Ferris, has the ball taken out of her hands by Jenny Worden. Worden up to Foley, back to Worden. Worden lays it up, no good, rebounded by Fairhurst. Fairhurst to Nadia Montero. Big rebound by Fairhurst there. Catherine Lewis holding. Yeah, nice job by the Lady Boxer to hold it up. 
get their thinking caps on and, and, and make this um, possession count. Nadia Montero lays it up and in, 48-41, seven point lead for the Boxers. Great feed inside, I couldn't see who fed it to her, but great feed. Worden for three, air ball out of bounds, but kept in bounds rather by Nadia Montero. Boxers got to do a good for three, good. Boxers did not do a good job getting the, um, getting a rebound there, um, they gave the Green Wave about three chances. They had three offensive boards there. Brockton needs to do a better job in these closing minutes. Otherwise, um, it's gonna get very hairy. I mean, looking now, because of that, they're only down by four points. Steven Moore takes his fourth timeout of the half. He's got one remaining with two minutes, 17 seconds left. The Green Wave down by four miles. Two minutes and 17 seconds left. It's winning time. Yeah, now it's time you start um, biting your nails. It's going to be a nail biter. It's going to be down to the um, the last seconds here. It looks like Brockton's going to have to be very careful because right now the Green Wave is playing very well, being very aggressive on the offensive boards, getting second and, and third tries on the shot, and they're taking advantage of it. A little bit of scoreboard confusion. The score is to a three-point game, 48-45 the score. Brockton on top of the green wave. Brockton will have the ball. Fairhurst is in there right now. She's gonna, she's the big, she's the big one. She's gonna have to really take control of those boards be aware um, when she has the basketball and where she's at. Miles Fairhurst is the wild card in this game. If she plays like we know she can, Brockton's gonna come away with the win. If she plays like she did the entirety of the first quarter, it's, it could go either way. I, I like how Brockton is using some of the clock, but they need to take advantage and hit the shot. Jackson for three! Big shot. Jelani Jackson with the huge three. And Brianna Donovan is going to the line. She was held by number 21, Nadia Montero. Miles, Jelani Jackson stepped up and hit the big shot, yeah, brought that, it up by six. Yeah, that, that was big time right there. Jackson for three, rejected by Tony Fairhurst. Silvermore the other way. Davington comes away with it, Aaron Foley. Draws the blocking foul and one. Again, Silvermore went down. I still think she should have held up. She tried to make something happen. She didn't, she didn't get the call. I think they would have been better off. She would have held the ball up, take some more time off that clock. Foley makes the end one attempt from the line. Three point game, 51 38. Brockton on top of Abington. Ferris inbounds to Jelani Jackson. Jackson over to Catherine Lewis. Nadia Montero loses it, and Abington goes the other way. Collie lays it up, no good. Out of bounds off of Brockton. Yeah, again, Green Wave hustling. Fairhurst got to really grab that basketball when it comes to her. She can't pat it around. She has to be in control. Wow. I did not see the foul there. I saw the block. It should have been green wave ball out of bounds, but I did not see a foul. Jenny Worden at the line for the two biggest free throws of the night. She's gone three for 11. And you're exactly right, Matt. Big three free throws for the young green wave lady at the free throw line.
A little bit of confusion to see how many fouls Catherine Lewis has. A little bit of official book confusion, Miles. We're in a great spot. The confusion is the last foul was called a number 21, Nadia Montero. The book has it down as called against Catherine Lewis. This foul is called against Catherine Lewis, so Lewis only has four, and Montero has one additional foul. Warden hits the first shot. Two point game, a minute six remaining. Warden goes two for two at the line, one point game. Catherine Lewis has it for the boxers. Over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson fouled by Aaron Foley. Yeah, big possession right here for the Lady Boxers. They really need to score put the pressure on the green wave. Lewis to inbound to Natasha Elias back in the game. Over to Jelani Jackson. Under a minute to go. Jackson to Lewis. Lewis to Elias. Elias holding 15 on the shot clock. Back to Jackson. Jackson loses it, but it's out of bounds off of Abington. Brockton ball with 35.3 remaining. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Mark. Yeah, I like her going to the basket, trying for the shot. She had a clear lane. Just good defense. Brockton's going to fire off a quick shot. Jump. Oh, that's huge, Miles. A kickball against Abington as Catherine Lewis threw it off of the foot of one of the green waves to get a fresh 30 second clock. Yeah, that was big. Yeah, it looks like the shot clock didn't start in time when uh, Brockton Lady Boxers got the ball. Silvermore to Jelani Jackson. About a four second difference. Brockton's gonna waste out this clock and hit a big shot. Yeah. And a foul against Jenny Warden. Jelani Jackson will be at the line. It's gonna be a one-on-one. -on -one. Brockton now in a bonus situation. Yeah, and Jackson needs to hit this shot right off the bat. This is a big shot right here for the guard. She's a sophomore. Jackson hits one. Two point game. Her veins ice cold right now. Shot went right through the nets. Biggest shot of her sophomore year right here. Yes. She hits it. Three point lead for Brock and forcing Abington to hit a three point and that's a huge turnover Miles Abington with an easy inbound, unable to get it inbounds. Brockton ball with under 20 seconds remaining. And that was because of the great defense by the Lady Boxers. Defense will win you games. Lady Boxers really need to get this ball inbounds and then run out the clock. That's what they need to do. Don't try and shoot the ball real quick. Run the clock out if possible. Catherine Lewis to inbound. She's gonna get rid of it or she's gonna call for a five second violation. And it's exactly that, Abington ball. Silva Moore taken down, holding her head. Uh, she, she went is down hard. In a lot of pain. She is crying. Her head bounced off the hardwood floor. Yeah. 
a weird situation. It looks like full body's got tangled up. It was her and, yeah. and Jenny Warden to the floor. And Silva Moore is down, writhing in pain. Yeah, so that was a that was a tough tough fall for uh, Silva Moore. As you can hear, she's in agony. And she's holding her head. Her head, once again, bounced off the floor. Yeah. And, and it, it, it was an awkward fall on top of that, but really the, the, the kicker is that her head hit the floor. And we see it all the time in football when, when a player's head snaps back and, and hits the turf it really causes an additional injury in addition to that awkward fall, Miles. Yeah, yes it does. And her mom comes out onto the court, very concerned. And I'm not sure if, if the boxers will call for a foul or um, Abington, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the ball was not even in bounds yet. So it's going to be an interesting call on the part of the officials to see who's got the ball and where the ball is put in bounds with 19.5 seconds remaining. Exactly. And now the bo lady boxes, they cannot lose their focus if the ball is handed over to the um, Abington girls basketball team. Brockton must focus on defense um, if anything, if anything, Matt, what you might want to do is when they get it over half court, foul. Before they shoot, shoot a shot, foul. Then you got a one, one on one um, at the free throw line, and they they can't shoot three, but they can shoot if they make the first one, then they can make the second one. Then the you, um, Brockton gets the ball back, but they still have a lead. And Abington has not been good at the line tonight. But, but but they've been they've really picked it up in this fourth quarter hitting those free throws. They were horrendous in that first half and the third quarter, but they've really made them count in the uh, fourth quarter here. Janisha Silvermore sitting up now. In a very scary situation. She's helped to her feet by Jerry Connors and head coach April Dingwell. And you know she's got a headache, but she's a real trooper. And it looks like a foul was on Brockton. So Warden, who's not really come alive on the free throw line. And the Brockton crowd now coming alive. Warden hits her first shot, two point game. Warden goes two for two. One point game, 20 seconds remaining. Abington's gonna foul. Brianna Donovan. Okay, so the Green Wave decided to foul right away, give themselves some time on the clock. Another, another big free throw. Nadia Montero's gonna take it for the boxers. Hero hits her first two-point game, 54-52. Yeah, that was clutch right there. Miles, this next shot might be even bigger than that one. Yes, because then the green wave would have to maybe go for a three. And it's gonna come down to that. Warden with the ball, 15 left on the clock. Abington calling their final timeout with 12.8 remaining. Well, I tell you, if I was a coach, I, and the way that um, Abington girls have been hitting their shots, I would play tough D and, and, and maybe a foul before the shot. Um, 
there's only 12 seconds left, maybe let them run off about five seconds and then foul. That way, if they get up there and make, if they say, so say they make both shots, well, it, it could be like five seconds left on the clock. All they got to do is get the ball in. They'll probably get fouled right away. But, uh, I don't know if I want to take my chances on playing good defense and then letting um, the green wave take that three-point shot. Miles Abington's hit the big shots tonight. 55-52 the score. Brought it up by three. The noticeable absence on the floor is Gianesha Silvermore, who has played the entirety of this game. Yes, she has. Maggie Cauley to inbound. Catherine Lewis putting the pressure. Warden over to Foley. Foley back to Cauley. Cauley rejected by Catherine Lewis. Brockton holds on. And Brianna Donovan forced to follow Jelani Jackson. And that's every coach's dream for their team when they're playing defense and that three-point shot goes up and, and you're uh, one of your defenders blocks the shot. That was a big block. That was the biggest, biggest block all night right there. I couldn't see who actually blocked the shot, but it was great defense by the Lady Boxers. Brianna Dunham fouls out, committed her fifth personal foul. Jackson to put the Boxers up by four and make it a two-possession game. She I take, does. I take uh, Matt Jackson's been ice cold at that free throw line here in the fourth quarter. When she's been at the free throw line, she's made the shots. In, around in, in 57-52, blocked up by five. Five seconds remaining. Foley for two. As time expires, the bucket counts. The final score, Brockton coming away with the huge win. Miles 57 to 54, and Jelani Jackson putting the dagger in the hearts of the Abington Green Wave. Yes, that was defense that won that game. Defense and boards right there at the end. Brockton did a nice job of taking care of the basketball. I tell you, the Green Wave gave him a scare. Miles, we got to keep an eye on Giannisha Silvermore's injury. She is one of the returning seniors from last year. She is a huge part of this Boxers team, and it will be a huge loss. A very scary injury where her head bounced off the hardwood floor here at Staff Gymnasium. Yeah, I'm, lo I'm looking at her right now. She looked like she's uh, rebounded. I'm sure she had a splitting headache getting up off that floor, but it looks like she's going to rebound and be back with the, um, the Lady Boxers at the next game. And Miles Brockton took a while to heat up, but when they did, they got hot. Yes, they did, and, and, and the key, again, another key was the free throw. When the Lady Boxers got to the free throw line there in the fourth quarter, they made the free throws. And Tony Fairhurst, such a big part of the win against the Ponikit, turned it on in the second half, able to rebound, able to put up the layups, and, and really helping the Boxers to the win here tonight. Yes, indeed, and I'm sure the coach is very proud of um, her Lady Boxers this evening. They hung in there, they didn't give up. Fairhurst finally came alive there in the fourth quarter. And it was just a big win all around for this um, Lady Boxer team. So the final score once again from Staff Gymnasium, 57 to 54. The Brockton Boxers defeat the border rivals, the Abington Green Wave. For my broadcast partner, Miles Jackson, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We will see you next game.